friends. Uh, my name is Mayam Kushwaha and uh, currently I'm working as an assistant professor in Department of Mechanical Engineering of ABES Engineering College, Ghaziabad. In this video today, I have uh, brought some of the questions from GATE 2023 of Mechanical Engineering. These questions are uh, specifically of the subject related to strength of materials, which you all know that it's a very important subject as far as GATE or ESE is concerned. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, the solution, the concept, and some of the mistakes that students generally do when solving such type of problems. So let's get started. The very first question which I have brought was uh, the question number 16 in the question paper. And uh, the question, as you would have already guessed, is related to the topic deflection of beams. This question was of MCQ type and it was asked for one mark only. So the question says that effective stiffness of a cantilever beam of length L and flexural rigidity EI subjected to a transverse tip load W is. So basically question is asking you to find out the stiffness of the beam. As we all know, stiffness is defined as load per unit deflection. So it's a very easy numerical and obviously one markup question has so it can be done is very easily. We know that for a cantilever beam, which is acted upon by a point load at free end, the deflection is total deflection the total deflection at the free end delta is given as W L cube upon 3 E I. So if we take this value over here, then stiffness can be calculated as load per unit deflection or 3 E I divided by L cube. So from this thing, we can say that the answer A is the right choice. So this question was pretty easy one and I hope every one of you would be able to understand this solution. Then let us jump to the next question. The next question is this one. Again, it seems to be the question from the topic bending stresses in beams. The type of the topic is MSQ. It is a multi-select question. That means there is a high probability that more than one options would be correct here. And again, it was asked for one mark only. So the question says that a beam undergoes a pure bending as shown in this figure. The stress strain curve for material is also given here, which is this one. The yield stress of the material is sigma y, which of the options given represents the bending stress distribution at cross section AA after plastic yielding. So question kya bol rap? Question is supposed in this question you are supposed to tell what will be the diagram of stress distribution over the cross section which is over here. So from the figure we know that this beam is bent by because of this bending moment here. So naturally the upper layer would be subjected to compression and the lower layer would be subjected to tension, right? So we know that that if let us say if this is the neutral layer, then the all the layers above this neutral would be subjected to compression, which we can take as negative. And all the layers which would lie below this neutral layer would be subjected to tension. This is a general 
this is a general diagram but let us just look at uh, this options here we cannot obviously since we do have uh, we do not have any numerical data here we cannot justify the value which would be present here so if we carefully look at the options let us say sigma y by root 2 this is totally possible value but as no numerical data is given in this numerical so we could not just say that the final value would be minus sigma y by root 2 so this option becomes wrong similarly b option also becomes wrong now comes option c and d it is totally possible that both of these options are right. It is also possible that either of these two options is right. So we have to go by for the general opinion. The question says that stress, what would be the stress after yielding? Now, if the yielding has taken place over the entire phase, if the yielding has taken place over the entire phase, then this diagram would be applicable. If yielding is done for the entire phase or all layers, and this is totally possible if yielding has occurred only in the extreme layers so if all the layers have gone up to the yielding point then the yielding stress will be present over the entire phase because here you can see the yielding stress is here which is constant so this is a true option but if it is just the start of yielding let's just say only the few layers the most the layers which are subjected to more's most stress whether compressive or tension only those layers have reached the point of yielding then this is right because up to this point from the neutral layer this is linearly increasing and let us say these say few layers have reached the yielding point so such type of diagram is applicable in this situation only so what we can say here is option both option c and d both options are okay hope you have you are following the solution uh, okay now let us move on to the next question next question belongs to theories of failure which again is a very important topic again it is a msq type marks is a still one so the question says that principal stresses at point p in a solid are 70 megapascal and nine minus 70 megapascal and zero so maximum value is 70 megapascal minimum value is minus 70 megapascal and the third stress is zero megapascal yield stress is given to us as 100 megapascal which predictions about material failure at P is or are correct? So let us just quickly jump to the solutions here, or sorry, options here. They talk about maximum normal stress theory, maximum shear stress theory, maximum normal stress theory, maximum shear stress theory. So it means we are just supposed to calculate about maximum principal stress and maximum shear stress theory. So let us first talk about maximum principal stress theory. So 
So maximum principal stress to see what does it say that if the principal stress maximum principal stress becomes greater than or equal to yield stress then material will fail. But is it happening? Is it happening in this case? Yield maximum is 70. Sorry, maximum principal stress is 70 megapascal and yield is 100 megapascal. So we can say that sigma 1 is much less than the yield value, which means according to this theory, material is safe material is safe what is happening according to maximum shear stress theory maximum shear stress theory that sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 should be less than or equal to this or let us just say this is so this is the condition of safe so we will say that material is safe so let us see what is happening here here what is tau max tau max would be 70 minus minus 70 divided by 2 which is equals to 70 mega pascal so what will be sigma y by 2 that would be 50 mega pascal so we see that tau max is greater than sigma y by 2 which implies that material will fail right so maximum shear stress theory says that material will fail maximum principal stress theory says that material will be safe so let us see what are our what are, what are there the options? Maximum stress theory predicts the material fails, which is wrong. Maximum shear stress theory predicts that the material fails. Very good. Maximum normal stress theory predicts that the material does not fail. Absolutely right. Maximum shear stress theory predicts that the material does not fail, which is wrong. So our options would be B and C. Okay, I hope you would have got uh, the solution. So, these were some of the questions in the which I have discussed in this video. There were total nine questions that were asked in a gate 2023. I shall be discussing the solution of the remaining also, but uh, in part two of the same video. Thank you for watching.